It's Monday night. What's going on? What's happening? And is my green screen? Okay. Okay. Remember. So, okay, everybody can hear me, I think. I always have to check that microphone. Uh, so, hello, it's Monday. I can't get too close. I, I don't know. My green screen tonight is a little bit, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's Maybe it's confused by the cat. That's a crazy cat. It's a crazy quilt. It's a mural. It's a mural in Cincinnati. I just kind of gave away what the <laughs> what the opening um, image is tonight. Uh, but I'll tell you more. Uh, and there's more to say about it. But uh, if I start to, you know, have that Skeletor thing happening, uh, let me know. Meow, meow. Who's that behind me? Uh, <laughs> yes, it's a it's a crazy cat quilt. Anyway, so so um, oh, I gotta get. Is that, I'm gonna move this down over here, hang on. You can't see that, but I don't want you to accidentally see it, okay. I have some funny things to show you tonight. And my mom, my mom is gonna, we're gonna call my mom. So it's gonna be really fun. I just have to move these things out of the way. I don't wanna, don't want anything to get in the way of your enjoyment. Of, oh, I wanna stream, I wanna stream. And I've heard that there's a thing I mean, like they stream their lives and it's like they've made their own personal big brother kind of show of their life 
And if they're not streaming, they're like, you know, they freak out, you know. So they stream like six hours, eight hours a day. Not not just playing games. I'm sure that's a thing too. But they are like life vloggers or whatever. And they just freak out if they're not live streaming. And I was like, is that happening to me? But I don't think it is. <laughs> I think it's fine. Uh, and it's evidenced by the fact that I was running around like a crazy person trying to get things ready because I said, hey, I'm going to do a live stream. And then I had two work call. Well, I had one work call and one friend call. And then Eric was here and he made ramen. And then all of a sudden it was time. It was the appointed hour and I wasn't ready. And I think if you're a live streamer who's addicted to live streaming your life, you don't care what you look like. You don't care if you're ready. That's the whole point that you just turn on the camera and that's what you get. And that's what it is. And it's addictive. Apparently. I don't know. I'm not, it's not, I'm very genuine. I'm a genuine person here. This is who I am, but come on, this is a public space. You know, I mean, I even put on like actual pants. Sometimes I stream in my sweatpants, but there's something about, maybe it's my, it's my background in the theater, but you know, it's a show. It's a show. You have, to, you have to prepare for the show and then you have to come on stage, right? And it's scary because you can't hide, you know? I was like, well, it's just going to be what it is, you know? And you really can't hide up here. So that's why if I get Skeletor face or like it looks like a, I'm like a film strip is, you know, celluloid is, is burning and half of my face goes gray, you have to, you have to tell me. Um... So I'm so glad that you came. I'm so glad that wh who is here can be here. Uh, this is Quilt Nerd. And we stream three times a week for sure. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. Central. Uh, and Saturdays at 4 p.m. Central. Always, always. Is that a strange time to do a live stream? Perhaps. But I'm in London. And when it's 11 a.m. in Chicago, where I also usually live, um, it's 5 p.m. for me. So it's like where everybody is, hmm, interesting. Um, everybody's just like, yeah, Monday's great. And then, then I'll have to chant as, I'm glad you're here. Um, we're streaming to YouTube at the same time, I believe. Uh, this is new. This is new for us. And I say us because this is like, you know, we got our community here. It's really true. It's really true. It's like we're in month four of the live stream experiment and we have a crew i mean we're not just like in fact it's a community that's fine but really it's crew <laughs> we're a crew we're like i don't know we have our people we have our like you know well i don't know if we have our roles yet you know we, we don't have to be so formal about it but that's the thing about a crew is you're just like you're a crew so we're the quilt nerd you know crew and we just like to get together and nerd out on quilts and that's what this show is about um so I'm going to say hi to everybody. And then if you are intrigued, if you're like, hmm, quilt nerd, what does that mean? Well, it does mean quilts. It's not like some metaphor. <laughs> uh, quilts get used as metaphor, the metaphor a lot, though. You know, uh, it's a patchwork of neighborhoods. You know, you hear that a lot. Or um, in fact, I've heard that America, uh, I've heard America referred to as more of a patchwork quilt than a melting pot, which I think is good in many ways. I mean, I think it's accurate. So I approve. Um, and not always in a good way, you know, because it's like patched together and it doesn't always melt. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, but yeah, like uh, quilts and stitches and patchwork, they get used a lot in uh, metaphorical terms. But in this show, on this show, uh, quilts are more than metaphors. Quilts, more than a metaphor. Hmm, not bad. Uh, but I'll tell you more about what this is going to be and what happens. And tonight I'm going to call my mother live on, you know, FaceTime. We're all going to hang out with her. She's, she's great. She's great. She's a, she's a laugh riot. She is. Um, Susan R. Michael. Well, Susan R. Michael, I have you to thank for the mural suggestion, I believe, because you put in the Discord. <gasps> I have news. I have news about the Discord. <gasps> Susan, pause, hold dog earing the Susan bookmarking that moment. I need to tell you all right now. My husband boosted the Discord server. What it means, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we have a vanity URL for our Discord. That's right. It is discord.gg. I think all of the Discords, I think that's true for slash quilt nerd. Yeah, 
Yeah. So there's no, no more of this like discord slash nine, seven, lowercase V, W, uppercase X disaster. It's, we have a thing. It's, it's like, it's got a name now. So it's discord dot something slash quilt nerd. Yeah, it's great. It's so great. Padma, thank you for helping out. I saw that on the, on the discord, the discussion. I really appreciate it. Molly. No, not Molly. Well, yes, <laughs> Molly, I thank you as well. But, uh, Myra. This is my to-do list. It's very large or I'd hold it up. It's really big. Um, but I know I see you. I see you. And you and I, we're going to plan a show together. It's going to be the Myra show. I mean, it's going to be because Myra, you know, you, you, you bid, you put bits in. <laughs> you, you did thimble things <laughs> in the disc, in the, uh, in the, in the Twitch. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's cool. I don't really know what I'm talking about either, but Myra was, uh, generous and participated and was an enthusiastic viewer and she and I are going to as a result put a show together um for everybody together you know like I'm going to take Myra's suggestions and do some stuff so anyway that's coming Myra I wanted to let you know I have not forgotten today was a very busy day um okay so so Susan yes I believe you put the mural tip in the discord and there are many quilt murals many 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 in fact there's so many I was like you know I'll grab a few murals for tonight's show that'd be great and I realized no it, it's going to take much more preparation because I've personally seen a bunch of quilt murals there are a lot of murals that are sort of quilt adjacent a lot of murals that you see in the city or in the country I've seen some in the in rural places some of them are sort of quilt adjacent, you know, they're sort of patchwork E, like there's a beautiful mural of B.B. King in downtown Chicago, extremely quilty, but it's not a quilt as such. So I want to include things like that. So it's going to take a little bit more work. Um, but thank you, Susan. Um, Susan Michaels here. Yes. Look, we're keeping your com you company, Susan, while you clean your quilt space. Fabulous. That's what the show's all about. Quilting Nancy. Indeed. It's Mary Fonz, Mary Fonz. Uh, I think I mentioned at one point my handle, Yo Mary Fonz. People always say that to me, Yo Mary Fonz. Since I was a wee bairn. I think I said wee bairn on the last show. Um, Yo Mary Fonz. I hear it all the time. Um, Marianne. Marianne is here. Marianne Tea Cake. It's a delicious name. Um, yay, Simi Mac. Simi Mac is here. So Demented is here. Fiendor coming in with the theme music. Fiendor, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, Monday nerding, why not? It's Monday, man. Uh, Pam Priest, an extra show. I like an extra show too. It started last week when Nicole Ritchie started selling G's Ben quilts on her, on Etsy. God, it was kind of fun. It was thrilling to just be like, I'm going live. Um, you know, I do like, yeah, I like the unexpected stream, but if I keep doing it, it won't be unexpected. So what am I gonna do? Oh, I'm having fun. Okay, Molly, Molly has to teach a class. But you're gonna just just hang out with us, Molly. Just like chill. And you know, when you what class are you teaching? I would like to know. Please let us know if you're comfortable doing that. <laughs> um, and Myra is is waiting for a patient to arrive, and this is perfect. If your patient has arrived and you missed the whole thing about you, <laughs> where I was like praising you and thanking you and planning things in your life, I hope that you'll I hope that you'll catch up on that. <laughs> Because I mean it, and it's very good. Okay, um, Natalie, hello. Natalie, it's great. I'm so great that you're here. Um, Yvonne is here. Hello, my dear. Word and bird nerd, excellent. Charlie Harper, we're going to figure it out. I don't know. I don't know if the mural is related to, I don't know if the person who, this this name on your screen is Edie Harper. Oh, can you see it? I don't know. The name on this mural reads Edie Harper. And I don't know if this person, this mural is related in any way to a Charlie Harper moment, but I can tell you that I've seen a few Charlie Harper inspired quilts and they're great. So that makes me need to write down Charlie Harper. Okay. If you, if you, if you're wondering what this show is about and I, you saw me write down, what, what am I talking about? What are, what are, what am I talking about with Warden Bird Nerd? Charlie Harper, what does this mean? You're going to find out. You're going to find out. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. Um, YouTube has repeats and delays happening. Hmm. Really? 
Oh, the cat does look like, you know, mm, if you're watching on YouTube, I hope, I hope it's working. It's a, it's a one person show here and it doesn't mean I shouldn't have everything ready and, you know, things shouldn't be working. You know, it's important. It's a one person show, so I got to take care of all that stuff. But the YouTube, Twitch, multi-stream, it is new and I thought I had everything set up right, but I don't know. It's got some kinks to work out. So if you are watching on YouTube and you're having a lot of trouble, come on over to Twitch, twitch.tv slash yo Mary Fonz. And, and you can, and you can watch it there and it should be smooth. The show was born on Twitch. So I will always have a place in my heart for it. Although some people really like it on YouTube. We're working it out. We're working it out. I promise. So be patient. Okay, please. And come back if, if it's a total disaster tonight, because every show is really fun. Um, Brendan. Brendan, I, I think I, I think I prefer Twitch because I feel like with with Twitch so far, and I know I I, I saw on a on the Discord, I think it was M Hicks was really having trouble logging into Twitch or you know getting into the chat. We have two factor authentication set up on the Twitch channel for chat, which makes it harder for trolls and the riffraff, you know, to come in. So I kind of think Twitch is a little bit safer simply because I have a little bit more of an understanding about this show on this platform, uh, on Twitch. But, um, but you know, I want people to watch. And so if YouTube is where a person's comfortable, that's cool. It's just going to get better and better. I mean, if you, if you, we've come a long way. We really have all of us because I mean, the green screen, the discord, it's, it's sort of like, Everything's like eh, eh, sort of limping along, but it is limping along, you know? Uh, PJ Meep. PJ Meep. A long time no see. I mean, maybe you've been lurking. It's really good to see you in the chat. I'm really glad you're here. Robin's Nest. I almost missed you. I, I would not miss you. Um, I'm really glad you're here too. Um, big fingers, small keyboard. <laughs> we, yes, indeed, indeed. We, we are, I think we're having a good evening. I hope we are. I hope that's true for you all. And if you're having a bad one, Hang out with everybody and maybe you'll feel a little bit, a little bit better. Oh, are you streaming on Thanksgiving Day? Hmm. You know, I was going, let me get back to that. Let me say hi to everybody and then I'll get back to it. Okay, <laughs> good. Star Sundance, hey! Star Sundance, this is great. Molly Squared, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like get a little, yeah, get a jacket, like a satin jacket with our names. I like that. I like that. And knives. And knives. That's what we need for our crew. Satin jackets and knives. That's what I always say. The Fellowship of the Quilt. Oh, you people. We have a very clever, smart, funny group in here. So you don't have to be any of those things. That's cool, really. But they're pretty funny. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Murals, quilts. Yes. Oh, there's so many things. Yes. We're... I'm going to remember that Myra said we're... I remember that. remember that. But did you do this? Of course you did. Of course you did. Um, okay. No money invested. Okay, good. Um, Holmes is here. Thank God. The write down is here. Great. Amy. Amy, Amy, this is great. What? Excuse me. I'm sorry. A Amy has seen. So we do all the hellos and we get, and then we, then we go. Okay. But this is very important because we hear things like this. Amy. <clears throat> says, I couldn't wait for the next show to see if anyone saw the news report about how quilting is a dying art. And Amy says, seriously? And I say, seriously? Which, which news report are you speaking of? Please put the link in the chat and we will, I will be clicking on it. If it's a US newspaper or magazine, I might have to do a thing to access it since I'm here in the UK. Um, but I'm, uh, totally grossed out and I want to look at it. Um, blueberry orange bread out of the oven, fresh blueberry orange bread at Robin's Nest Creations House. Very nice. Ooh, linguistics on citations. God, you're so nerdy. It's just like, oh, fabulous. Um, daughter of Charlie Harper. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Move. So demented. You got to move your computer. Good, good. There's big stuff to see today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Judgy, judgy. Okay, so 
Okay, I said hi to everybody. So let me just tell you, Judgy, that uh, here last year, maybe around this time, there was a, a dolphin that was missing in Ireland. This is very random, but I just, I love your name, Judgy, because it makes me think of this dolphin that was missing in, in Ireland. And some of you might know about this if you're living in Ireland or the UK. It's a very big deal because there was this dolphin who would come say hi to people for years and years. You know, people would see this dolphin, fungi, fungi, fungi the dolphin. And, and Fungi would say hi and, you know, people knew Fungi and he would come along. And then j last year, Fungi disappeared. <laughs> it's terrible. I mean, but his little name was so sweet. Fungi! And so <laughs> so we watched this news report and I was like, <gasps> Fungi! And, and so we would just walk around, you know, Fungi! Calling out <laughs> Fungi! <laughs> but at the beginning, I didn't, I didn't get the name right. So I thought it was Fudgy. <laughs> Fudgy the dolphin. So I was like, Fudgy! <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Judgy. So that's my Judgy. You remember the missing dolphin. Thank you. Thank you. You see? Fudgy. Okay. Here we go. I don't know what's happening. So here we go. Here we go. Let's talk about this show. This show briefly. So I grew up in a household. I told my mom I'd call her at half past, so I got to hurry up. Um, I grew up in a household where there were quilts all the time, all the time, everywhere, okay? It wasn't that my grandmother quilted or my great-grandmother quilted. My mom did, okay? My mom did. And she is a quilt superstar. It's true. It's true. Television show, best-selling magazine in quilt history. You know what the circulation was of my mom's magazine at, the, at its height? 350,000 people. 350,000, sorry, no. 350,000 circulation. It's a very, it's big. That's a big, it's big. Because quilting is a big deal. And it's been a big deal for a long time. And so I didn't really care. <laughs> I didn't really care. Until I was in my late 20s. And then I was like, you know what? I know I'm like this writer and performer living in Chicago. I know that I have my life and I'm like doing my thing. And I'm so cool. I wasn't cool then and I'm not now. But I sort of like freaked out. I mean... That sounds like I really freaked out. I didn't like totally crack up, but I had a really bad year. <laughs> and I was like, I think, I think I'm gonna make a quilt, you know? I think I wanna do it. And then I did, and I figured it out. Uh, it was really fun. And then later, after I was on the show and doing magazines too, crazy, never thought that would happen. Um, then I started reading about quilts and I started seeing them in the world, like on the fashion runways and in fine art and in history and all around the world. And I was like, you know, I think, I think quilts are my jam because quilts are everywhere in the world. And I, and the world is my jam. The world is my jam. So, so I read about quilts and I study them and I talk about them. I lecture about them. And I find all this wonderful stuff all the time about quilts in art and in music. We talked about folk music, about the Carter family last, last show. It was so amazing. Was that the last show? So amazing, you know, and like folk music and American country music roots. And there's quilts in that story, you know? And so we looked at that and it was just fascinating. And, and then we were like in the art world in the 60s. Anyway, so what I found out is that I'm really lucky and I think everybody who watches this show now and in the future is really lucky because if you love quilts and you nerd out on them, they will take you absolutely anywhere. And that reminds, so I've got on my little list. So speaking of that, I have a great idea for a game, I think, I think. I don't know if it's a great idea, but it's a thought I had. You know, this show, we we talk about everything. I mean, it's crazy. We're talking about like ancient Egypt and then we're talking about Madonna. I don't know. And we are. We talk about everything because there's a quilt in, in everything, you know. And it's not that we like have to find the quilts. It's that we find the quilts and then there's all this great stuff, right? It's, it's this pathway to everything. And that's why we're lucky because we have this great pathway to everything. So, so I was like, we could like probably do a game that's like six degrees from a quilt, but it would be like two degrees. You know what I'm saying? Like a six degrees from Kevin Bacon thing. But like, I just said Madonna. I pulled that truly out of the air. But like, 
what's like what's the connection to, to like how do you connect quilts and madonna and i think you could connect them pretty quickly you know like i feel like we could take any suggestion like from the audience and be like hmm great and get it especially between you know among us all don't you think that'd be fun i think we have to figure out how to like randomize like a suggestion thing eric and i saw some improv last night maybe that's why i'm thinking about it um <laughs> great judgy um so <laughs> funky so quilts are compelling yes quilts are compelling marianne and in, in, indeed they are compelling they're they're like the best of us they represent the best of us you know they're humanity it's it's our humanity we have to wrap ourselves we we have a baby and we wrap it in a quilt and someone's dying and we wrap them in a quilt and when you're sick you know you need one but if someone's getting married or someone's graduating from college there's a quilt there too i mean it's just it's a it's an artifact right it's a human artifact and it's just great um so yeah the game sounds like fun so i mean we could start with madonna let's not do it right now because i gotta call my mom but we could start with madonna i love madonna huge fan huge fan okay now i get small oh now i'm small hey. so this is this picture that i that i pulled up and i'm gonna so it's a mural in cincinnati the show always starts with a uh a quilt on my on my desktop a quilt or sometimes I guess it's not a quilt right because this is something else so this mural is yeah in Cincinnati downtown it's called crazy cat crazy quilt you can see sort of the quilty thing back here it's very patchworky very graphic and here's what uh, artworkcincinnati.org says about this quilt I mean about this mural Crazy Cat Crazy Quilt honors the accomplished life and career of Cincinnati master artist Edie Harper. Charlie Harper was Cincinnati, wasn't he? He was. So the famous, the great Charlie Harper. Totally Cincinnati. Ohio, right? I'm sure. Oh yeah, okay. Edie was born in 1922 in Kansas City and relocated to Cincinnati in the 1930s when her father took a job with Procter & Gamble the place they would call home, I think they mean Kansas City, for the remainder of their lives. Edie enrolled at the Art Academy of Cincinnati in 1940, and it was there that she met Charlie Harper, her partner in life. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There you go. Her partner in life and love. Edie always drew on her childhood for inspiration, a time she spent developing her love for animals, especially her favorite cat, Katrinka, colorfully depicted in the mural. Uh, she was inspired by landscapes and life in the Midwest. Lots of quilts. Edie passed away in 2010 at the age of 87. And, but as an Art Academy distinguished alumnus, she left behind a beautiful legacy that will continue to be celebrated for many years to come. Uh, great. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's a poem. There's a poem. There's a poem. That's another thing about this show. I get things together, but I don't read everything ahead of time it could be a disaster who knows what i'm gonna read out loud live to you and it doesn't always go perfectly i i will oh there's a bug up there i mean it's just a little like gnat but it's large okay um i don't always i mean i i want to discover things with you so i just discovered that there's a poem that goes with this mural are you ready crazy cat crazy quilt by edie harper scraps from here scraps from there Silk and satin, velvet and lace. What a super sleeping place. Why use a basket or a box when there's such a comfy spot? Crazy quilt? Yes. Crazy cat? No. <laughs> Fudgy! <laughs> okay. That's great. That's great. So I'll put this link in the Discord because I put all the episode show notes in the Discord. Oh, I can never spell Cincinnati, ever, at all, or committee. If there's a committee in Cincinnati, I'm in big trouble. Yeah, Charlie Harper. Okay, okay, yeah, Edie is his wife. Well, I, I did not know. But Charlie Harper quilts, I mean, those little robins, no, cardinals, the little famous cardinals. I've seen a quilt that was, um, that used those cardinals. Okay, okay, so we got to call my mom. And there's other things I have to show you, but I think I could actually... I was thinking I could show her and you at the same time. You know, we'll see how we'll see how it goes. But here we go. I'm gonna call my mom. 
I've never, well, we did do this once. Okay, FaceTime. I told her to be ready. Oh, that's weird. Okay, well, she'll be here and not me. <laughs> Look at this cool green screen, okay. <gasps> oh, yay, hi! Hi, mom. Hi, sweetie. Okay, say something. Okay, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, hang on. I'm turning. I'm turning you up. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hi, dearie. Do Do you see my cool green screen? Yeah, I can. I see. I see. Uh, it's. I can see it hooked on the wall. Well, it's actually. You know what? This is amazing. I have to show you this. This is unbelievable. Eric got me this. It just. You just go <laughs> like that. And then you just pull it up like that. Isn't that cool? It's it's so cool. I love it so much. He's he he carried it from a thing. Anyway, he got it for me. Well, it looks you look that sweater looks great. Is that a UK sweater? Yeah, it's a Barbour. It's you know that you know bar. It's an old it's an old company that makes like Wellingtons and stuff. Oh oh, that looks so great. <laughs> I love it. I, well, I love you. It's so good to see you. How are you? Are we on with people? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I should tell you we are. <laughs> Everyone's very excited that you're here. And, and yeah. And, okay, I'm going to make sure everybody can hear you. And I think it's, I think it's good. Well, well. I don't mean, I don't mean to, to sound vain, but I, I thought about my hair. I haven't had my hair cut since mid-July. Oh, yeah? And I got it done at your salon, you know, in oh, Chicago. Yeah. So I'm going back right after New Year, after Christmas. I mean, at the, at the first week of December, I'm going to Chicago to go to George to have my hair cut, ah. and then, which sounds really fancy. I'm going to Chicago to get my hair cut. But then I'm going to have new headshots made with Azuri. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's so she, cool. So Azuri... Yeah, Azuri, everybody, is Azuri Watala, one of the two, I mean, uh, divine, uh, sublime photographers for Quilt Folk magazine, and a good friend of mine, and a friend of Rebecca's, and she's going to take mom's picture. That's amazing. Well, you're a lucky woman, because she is extremely, extremely talented, as you know, as you know. So I'm going to the family hair salon, and then I'm going to the family photographer, <laughs> and did you know that she's E-N-G-A-G-E-D? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yes, yes. I spelled it because it's so no one would understand. Oh, well, I had to. I think they can spell. Yes, Azuri's engaged. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so everybody's. Oh, Rock So Cool is here. Mom, when you see me look down, it's because I'm looking at the chat. And it's kind of weird yes. because I, if I look here, I'm probably looking at you, but my camera's here. So. Yeah. Is that, it's weird, right? It looks like you're looking at the thumbnail of me on my phone, so it works fine. I am, yeah, okay, that's exactly. It. So so everyone's saying hi, and everyone's very excited. And and there is a, there are a few questions from uh, about the quilt behind you. Can you tell people what's what that is? Oh, yeah, it's really neat. And I wrote a, I I have a website MarianneFons.com that you set up for me. Yep. And um, I wrote if if they did a search in blog posts for my long lost love, it, there's a whole story of this quilt, but it was uh, it was made by the ancestors of George Montrose, who was the owner at one time of Montrose Pharmacy here in Winterset. And I first saw this quilt when I was a fairly new quilter, and we were hunting around town for quilts to have in our local show. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I right that Rod is on this call too, Rod Kirikov? Uh No, I was talking to him earlier on a business call. Okay, well, the cool thing was he's a part of this story because yeah. we, we put this quilt, it's a it's a log cabin, it's a windmill log cabin, it's one of those fantastic quilts. It's wool, mm. the borders are, are velvet, mm. checkerboard. And Fabulous. Anyway, we, we had the quilt in the local quilt show, and I never forgot it because it was some of the most fantastic workmanship I, I ever saw. Well, a year or so ago, when Pat Montross died, this quilt wound up in an auction. Mm -hmm. And I bid online. I was nervous as a cat bidding on it because I don't really collect antique quilts. Mm -hmm. But I got it, and um, it turned out in the auction house in Cedar Rapids one of the co-workers was a quilter and she said well really glad you got that quilt and i'm like well you should bring it to winterset and come to the quilt museum and deliver it and they oh, did oh cool that's great <laughs> so it's a quilt i mean i could go across the room but i mean you can never yeah. get tired of looking at this quilt it's I mean, amazing it's, just, it's, it's true just so, it's just wonderful it's truly it's truly great yeah yeah show your office show, show the room 
Well, okay, so uh, so here is, I just point the camera. So the quilt on the other wall is a, a wagon wheel. That There's I Scrabble, wanted. Scrabble. Hi, Scrabble. Scrabble. She doesn't understand dreams. I know, Scrabble, hi. Oh, Mama, she got her hair cut. Yeah, she got her hair, she went to the beauty. She got her hair cut in winter, so I'm, not, I'm getting my toggle. But this quilt was, uh, was very inexpensive. It's also wool, but it was at a thrift shop in New York City near Hannah's apartment. I visited and I found it. and. And it's another one. It's its workmanship is rather poor by comparison to the windmill blades, but it's like this. You never get tired of looking at it. There's always something new to see. And then we've decorated for Christmas. So here's the fireplace with the Merry Christmas. And oh, that's great. That looks great. Yeah. And then out the window of my office, you can see the Madison County Courthouse. Uh, let's see. We can't. Can you get closer to the window? The light. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. And I got little Christmas trees on the windows on the and so that's so that's great. it. That's that's really that's, we've good. got other Christmas decorations up, but anyway, it's pretty easy. Yeah, we keep it simple. It's good. You know, Eric and I are going to be home for Christmas, but not Thanksgiving, you know, and, yeah. and I, you know, Eric, he says, he says like Christmas, he grumbles and he just makes such a noise about how he doesn't care. Scrooge, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, Scrooge. Oh yeah. That's He's Scrooge. Like, That's all Scrooge. Nobody cares more. I think that it's like a, 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 a <laughs> you know that it's a little special because he didn't he had he grew up in such a terrible situation and so i think anyway i think he really does like it so my point is i think i'm going to get a little christmas tree just a little okay, just a I little one he says he doesn't need it but i wanted yeah yeah and i got a special secret for him but oh, yeah. i can't talk about it okay so here's what i want to ask you so um so i have can you what can you see on your screen is it just me it's just me right well, I can see you and I can see that green screen and I can see the frame of it. Okay. But you can't see what's on. So you're on your phone and I told you I thought that would be better. Are you, do you have your laptop in front of you? Yes. Can you open it? Because here's the... <laughs> can you... Okay, let's start with opening it. Okay. Can you do that? So here's the thing, Mom, is that like... So I have stuff to show people. That's what... You know, you've seen kind of what I do. At least you see, you understand. Yeah. You know, I show people stuff and, and I have such fun things to show them tonight. And I would love it if you could watch with me and we could talk about them together. I know this is a curveball because I was just going to call you and talk yeah. to you. But if you can see what's on my screen, which you should be able to do by going to twitch.tv slash yo Mary Fonz, this okay. won't be a problem at all. So let's just see if it'll happen. Because I mean, <laughs> you're going to laugh and you're so funny and we're really funny together. So I feel like this could be good. Twitch.com. Twit, Twitch. Twitch, uh -huh. like I'm twitching. Twitch.com. Uh -huh. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Twitch.tv. Okay. Slash Yo Mary Fonz. And the show, and you should, <laughs> you'll see yourself on, <laughs> you'll see that you're on the screen, probably, right? Are you bouncing it's around? It's going around. Yes. You can see yourself, right? It's coming along. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. Okay. Twitch is new for everybody. I mean, sometimes I feel bad that I did Twitch instead of YouTube they, from they the start. But first. Yeah, they will. Um, yeah. I should give you my login, but they'd probably confuse it a lot that I'm like logging in. You should entertain people. You should entertain people. Yeah, okay, I'm going to entertain people. Me. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, there I am. I see, <laughs> see the screen. It's, it's kind of weird, oh, that's right? so cool. It is cool. It is cool. So that's you. And now you can see what my green screen really looks like on the screen, right? Looks cool. Right? Like I'm in front of the mural. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's delayed. It is? Okay. Well, here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go for it anyway. Is it too weird that you have a delay? Oh, I know. I know. How about you turn the sound off? Thanks, everybody, for being patient. But it would be so fun I'll to look at stuff. With my phone. Phone. I'll turn my phone down. Yeah. 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 That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see if this works. <laughs> okay, but I hear an echo. Hang on, everyone just just hang on one second. Just it might break the internet. I know. Hey Jill, this is a bonus stream. I don't usually stream on Monday, as you know. It's just it just thought it would we thought it'd be fun. 
Okay, so wait. So you can't have mom because I hear the echo of the thing. So I would. This is a bonus stream. Oh, wait, wait. Eric says you have to mute the computer. Okay, so wait. So you can't have mom because I hear the echo of the thing. So I will. Oh, wait, wait, Eric says you have to mute the computer. Just turn the volume all the way down on the computer. Okay. That, that, that's better. So I don't hear so it. I don't hear Oh, no. Okay. So I have to mute the audio on Twitch. I'll have to mute the audio on Twitch. Okay. She, she does. Okay, okay, Mom, here's what you do. One more, one more thing. Eric is saying you have to mute the audio on Twitch. So the screen that you're watching, there's a little, just like on a YouTube video, you can mute the little horn sound thing and it'll mute it. Yeah? Okay. Oh, I don't hear anything. That's great. Now you talk, Mom. Can you hear me? Yes! Oh. Yay! Fungi! Mom, I told this story about, well, I'll tell you later. Okay. Okay, so this, <laughs> Jill says it's like Inception. Everyone's saying time travel. Ah! Um, <laughs> Hey, Projector, 1991, first time chat. I'm so glad you're here. I think you're, I mean, you're here seeing me and my mom talk to each other. And we're gonna talk about quilts right now. So everybody's been really patient. If you came for quilts, you're gonna get them. Um, and, and you're gonna get them with Marianne. So um, mom, can you put one last thing, just get you more in the center of your screen. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so. Here's what I've got to show some people. And I, I'm glad you're here because I have some questions about the American Folk Art Museum and, and their quilts. I remember you told me, we're gonna get to this in just a second, but you told me that, mm, come on, come on. Can you hear me? Oh shit, we may have, we may have done too much. Maybe we did too much, okay. Are you there? Yes. Okay. You told me long ago, I thought that the American Folk Art Museum like lost their building or something. What do you know about that? Do you know, cause I have a program. Let me show you what I have. I found a program from here. I'll do it like this. This is a program from the, the, the American Craft Museum. It's from the 60s or 70s. I'm going to go side by side here. And hang on. And it, it's it's from the American Craft Museum. And I think it's what the American Folk Art Museum became. So you see, it says the Museum of Contemporary Craft. That's down here from 1976. It was a quilt exhibit. And you may not know this, and that's fine. I'm putting you on the spot. But... We, I was trying to find stuff about the Folk Art Museum or something, some exhibit, and it seems like it's been a bunch of different things. Is that true? Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because it's kind of delayed. The video of me is delayed. And it's a little bit weird, but okay. it's okay by me. I know a little bit, and uh, it wasn't all that long ago, and I understand there was, like, mismanagement and the American Folk Art Museum, which way back when I was the winner in the Statue of Liberty contest that was sponsored by the American Folk Art Museum, um, it had a building. And then it's not been that long ago that they did lose their building. Mm. And the scuttlebutt was that it was mismanagement. And because I remember going to a one artist show at their building of Paula Nadelstern. I went oh. to New York for more than one reason. I think Hannah went with me to um that exhibit which was very cool and i think maybe that's in the new location but they lost their building but they are still there and they're right across from uh the lincoln center from I mean, from the metropolitan opera oh wow and it's a small space and i went there a few years ago i remember it was january it's free freezing cold katie and i went within the past four years mm -hmm. we went to new york and we went there and the exhibit <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> It's live. It's live. It's just it's live. live. Yeah. Uh, anything can happen. So, um, so the Scrabble. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's not. Um, <laughs> the, the exhibit. Am I?
Stand by. Stand by. It's fine. It's fine. That's this is why it's it's you know, it's a Monday show. It's a bonus show. Nobody thought we would even be here. <laughs> Aren't you glad you are? Yes. Because because it's look at that quilt. Look at that quilt and look at this. Look at this. This thing I'm going to show you all that I'm going to, you know, pull that I'm gonna flip through. It's crazy. It's from 1976, and it's crazy. Hey, Scrabble. See, look. See, you, yeah. you, we we have to endure some of the barks and the strangeness, but then we get we get a puppy. So here's okay. what I remember yeah. is that when I went to this exhibit, it was pretty small, and it's in this kind of hole in the wall, right across the street from Lincoln Center, and the exhibit was from if you know the name Annette Giro. Oh yeah. Australian. Mm -hmm. She wrote the big book on Australian quilts, and she had curated an exhibit uh, for um, of those soldier quilts. Yes, you know those amazing wool that convalescent quilts. Intarsia, yeah, then, yeah. What's that? The wool intarsia. Yeah, the, yes, yeah. yes. And then that exhibit went to uh, Lincoln, and I went to Lincoln to see it, and it was there were more in there because there was room for more. Mm. So um, anyway, mm. uh, that's what I remember, and so I don't really know the whole. A background, although I think it's, you know, Katie went on a trip, my good friend Katie uh, went on a trip to, um, it was a Metropolitan Museum of Art uh, trip to Vienna some time ago, and a lady that was on the cruise, I think, works at the Folk Art Museum. So. Oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> so it's a small world. It is a small world, and it's a small yeah. world, and it's also, like, you know, I'm putting you on the spot to tell me, you know, tell us all, right, the people who are watching yeah. this uh, about the American uh, Folk Art Museum or or in its earlier incarnation, maybe the Museum of Contemporary Crafts, the Museum of Contemporary Crafts, because there's some association there or, or there's there's something. This museum is no longer is does no longer exist. But what oh. I want to do, if you don't mind, is I want to look at this catalog with you this is a museum this is a, an mm -hmm. exhibition catalog from 1976 now i'm gonna pull you down actually so people won't see you right now for a minute because i don't want to cover up the my phone i could move my phone too. no i it's me it's because the i i i control this okay. little you know thingamajig yeah. so i'm gonna so we hear your voice but we won't see you and okay. the beautiful scrabble dog for just a minute but we can hear you so check this out so this is it's called the new american quilt it's so groovy mom this thing is so groovy and it's from what did i say 76 right so wow. yeah april 1976 so that's the bicentennial time that's when you started making quilts right yes. it was 1975 so this is in new york city so it's it's five years after the whitney and these are i mean look at the look at the hands these are i mean it, the, and the catalog isn't long it's like 20 pages and so there are these amazing quilts on this in this catalog. I think I've seen that quilt before. Yeah. And isn't it dreadful how back then they had to print pictures of quilts in black and white? I know. The, so the, expensive. There are some in color. It's not all black yeah, and white. There are some. have in certain color. color pages, but that's amazing. Isn't it wonderful? It's, it's so neat. And this does it is what say is, who made it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it says it's uh, Hands and Feet by Cynthia Panucci. And the fun thing, so it's Pima cotton, corduroy, and polyfill, and it's silk screened. So the thing is about this show that's so much fun, Mom, is that we get to nerd out. So like every single one of these quilts is another place to explore. So like, who is Cynthia Panucci? Did she make other quilts? What did she do? What is she doing now? Like that, it's so much fun because every single one of these people can do it. I mean, every single one of these people are, you know worth uh, investigating, right? But and then just by the way, that that cover quilt, these lips, these lips, so great. It's called Landscape in Blue. It's a detail, and it's um, made in 1973 by Gwen Lynn Gu. Well, the thing anyway. that strikes me, Mary, yeah. and you're you're the one who has written about this, and we talked about it, of course, uh, in at QuiltCon, which I want to go to QuiltCon. I forgot that it was coming up. I got to oh, get yeah. a ticket. Spot. But that, you know, because of the Whitney and everything that was in the water, you know, the art world got so interested mm -hmm. in quilts and yeah. so when you read what the fabric was that it was silk screen it's a mixed media really yeah um with corduroy and so forth because you know this, this was not someone coming from the sewing angle they right. were coming from the art angle and exactly. i just i think it's fascinating and i'm thrilled to see it it's so exciting and this is very rare i mean that we're looking at this like you don't you don't you don't find this every day so i'm going to read um what it says about the exhibition because it's kind of hard for 
I mean, it's just better to read it because people aren't necessarily yeah. looking directly at the screen or whatnot. So here's what it says. It says, this is from Paul J. Smith, the director of the Museum of Contemporary Crafts of the American Crafts Council. Interesting. Uh, Mr. Smith says, this exhibition features the very active tradition of quilt making being carried on today in America. In researching this show, we reviewed quilts submitted by over 300 artists, all of artists, right, mom? You yeah. just said that all of whom are doing highly accomplished work. Because of our limited space, it was obviously impossible to include all the outstanding examples of quilt making. Therefore, our emphasis in making selections was focused on innovative techniques and new directions. Oh, we should ask my mom about artists in the quilt, right? People remind me to do that. Mm -hmm. To the artists, collectors, and galleries, we extend our thanks. Okay, da da da, financial support. Okay, and then here on the other side, Ruth Amdur Tannenhaus, the exhibition curator, says, introduction, though the vast majority of American quilters still produce works incorporating time-honored patterns, the artists represented in this exhibition have transcended the historical quilt form by utilizing novel treatments to realize fresh images in fiber. No longer relegated to a purely utilitarian role, these contemporary examples of a traditional American craft uh, place form over function. Many of these pieces are characteristic of soft sculpture in their three-dimensionality. Unique themes and the application of new materials and techniques distinguish the present from the past. The use of photosynthesized cloth, tie-dye, silk screen, and batik permit the quilter, it's interesting, batik was so wild, right, uh, back then, because everybody uses batik now, uh, and batik permit the quilter to achieve strong personal statements through bold graphic treatment. The new American quilt exhibit documents these important creations in fabric art. I won't read all of the stuff for every quilt, but um well, something that kind of bugged me early in the description i mean i think i can see how it was written but how these transcend you know these trans yeah. these transcend it's like you know we could think of plenty of images in 19th century quilts except of 19th century quilts ain't nothing transcending them yeah yeah right yeah. exactly and i forgot i got it before i forget i forgot i mentioned rod kirikoff because i took a pic the quilt that's behind the me on the wall stuck with me so much that when he was writing his book um i sent a photograph of that quilt to rod kirikoff oh, out yeah. in california and that quilt actually went to california and is in uh the american quilt his book oh that's so great picture. so anybody that's got his book it's, it's called the american quilt right yeah a uh, history of cloth and comfort yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah there's a full bleed of that of that quilt in hmm. in that book so you can see it in great detail so that's what i wanted to mention about rod um that's interesting. We could actually look at it because there's a digital copy online of that book. Yeah. We could look at it. Yeah. Um, okay. okay, so this Sorry one is... Digression. Yeah. No, no. That, Mom, this show is all a digression. That's what it is. <laughs> it is a it is a two-hour-ish uh, digression. It's just r really fun. Oh, this is Jonathan digress. Holstein. This this was written by Jonathan a Holstein. Di a digress -a quilt. digress -a quilt. Yeah, that's good. So this is written by Jonathan Holstein. We're not going to read it. But this quilt is made by Risa Goldman in 1974 gum biochromate and pigment on muslin and cotton it's 98 by 72 and who has she got here so like that's marilyn I, can do you recognize any of these faces no that's cary grant or something down there i don't know i don't know we're, we're gonna we're gonna are they all on. identified no no i no. bet they were important at the time yeah exactly so that's hank williams hey another country music reference we were talking about country music last mm -hmm, time yeah uh, Sandra Humberson, Bigger Than Life. Oh my God, it's 100 by 80. That quilt of Hank Williams, 100 wow. by 80 inches. They should say 80 by 100. It's amazing because art is usually given the crosswise and then the up and down. Yeah, it's true. That's, that's strange. Why weren't you consulted? Whoops. But, I, I mean, really. It's me. <laughs> okay, wait. This one's interesting. I love this. I love these quilts from this time period, Mom, because this satin, I mean, like, it's just so groovy, you know? Did you it ever... It looks like, almost like a pe petticoat quilt, you know, like one of those whole cloth petticoat quilts, but then with this image on it. Yeah, the, I mean, it's kind of... I don't know. I mean... If do you, you didn't know it was Hank Williams, Sorry. he looks like a menacing. He's kind of menacing looking. Me... Yeah, he looks... Yeah, he's a little menacing. He, he was a nice guy, wasn't he? <laughs> I don't I know. So. Um, Never so crossed paths. This is the mountain from my window, 1975. Helen Batar. It's 100 by 100. 
That's so. pretty, that's pretty big. Okay, let's see what else we got. Um, yeah, black and white. That looks a little like it could be Molly Upton, but it isn't. Oh, that's Susan Hoffman though. Am I good or am I good? Because Susan Hoffman was with Molly Upton. She that they did the stuff together. Look at that. That's Susan Hoffman. How about that? It's called. You know your you know your art. I do. I know my quilts. My quilt art. Stephen and Peter is what this is. That's interesting. This like line drawing. It's interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's very feminine. <laughs> Um, okay, Catherine Westfall. I don't know. So tell me about what the art quilt was like when I mean because these are art quilts, right? But we didn't really have that word for it yet, right? I mean, well, yeah, and and I don't know much about the artist and the quilt, but the thing I remember so vividly from early days of the modern quilt making, the current quilt making revival, is going to Houston uh, to quilt um, market and quilt uh, the quilt festival, and all the the people like. Um, uh, Yvonne Forsella and uh, Jan Myers Newberry and Nancy Crow mm -hmm. and all these early people. We were all together. Mm. We were all in one place and we all went to the same things because, you know, it was. And then, you know, they be, they got enough traction themselves mm -hmm. that they kind of splintered off uh, Chris Wolf Edmonds and, and so forth. And so um, uh, and interestingly, uh, oh, my gosh. I'm, oh, do you, know the, do you know the name Therese May? Yeah. Okay, we have a quilt by Kurt Therese May at the exhibit called Here Comes the Sun at, Sun at the Iowa Quilt Museum wow. right now because Joe Cunningham, this is a digression, Joe Cunningham, it was our idea to have something bright during the winter. Mm -hmm. And so Here Comes the Sun, so all the quilts have orange in them, and we have this amazing quilt. I mean, it's like a who's who, the whole exhibit. That's we great. got quilts from Rod Kirikoff, we got quilts from Julie Silver, we've got quilts by Joe Cunningham, who's so amazing, mm -hmm. and we've got this Therese May quilt that's called Cat Face that's just a, a dynamic. It's well, just maybe we can- Plus antiques. Maybe we can find it. Let's Once we look at the this catalog, I'm gonna see if we can yeah. find it online and we can look at it. If there's an image online, I'll find it. Yeah. You know? That'd be great. It'd be great to see, because yeah. I wanna, yeah, I wanna see it. Yeah, um, Cat Face. Cat Face. So that, this is this bacon thing. I've seen this before, this, Oh, yeah. It's Joan Lintalt, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah the so. names aren't too familiar because I wasn't really, you know, I didn't get involved. I didn't make a quilt till 77, you know. Right, so. right. And this is I, a different. I, and I was living in Winterset, Iowa. No access to any right, of this stuff. Right. Rod Cadonnell. Does that, does that name ring a bell? Yes. This is Rod Cadonnell yes. on the left. She's a pretty interesting person. Yep. I like her a lot. Yep. Um, more bacon. More bacon. Yeah. Look at that bacon. That looks like embroidery. Interesting. I mean, these are so out there, you know? They're really yeah, kind of out there. they really there. are. And I can't remember what year the Dairy Barn started. You know, that was Quilt National. It was 79. I remember because, I mean, I looked it up recently and it's as old as me, you know? Yeah. Oh, so wow, yeah. 79. That's right. I keep forgetting you weren't born when I made that first quilt. So who made mm -hmm. this? This is Anne Ramo. It's called Flying oh. Carpet Number 2. Interesting. That's it. That's it. So, That's the exhibit. Know, it oh, and this one. I love this one. I love this one. It takes, you know, we know it takes a while to make a quilt, even if you're working. You know, like I always say, it takes a long time to make a quilt if you're not working on it. Mm -hmm. But even if you are working on it, it takes a while. And so, you know, these quilts, the dates, the years of these quilts, you know, they had to be started um, prior to that mm -hmm. and finished and submitted and everything. So you think, you know, these people were very, they were ahead of the Whitney. Yeah, I know. Sure. Exactly. They were part of the reason. I mean, they were probably part of the. I don't know about Jonathan Holstein if he was, you know, he had conceived, you know, the Whitney, but he was hanging out with artists. So, I mean, I wonder if, you know, it's a chicken and an egg thing, you know? Yeah. Like, so he, he maybe thought, hey, now's the time for quilts because this was in the air. But the thing is, Mom, yeah, exactly. It was in the air. I mean, in the 60s, the Freedom Quilting Bee was going on, yeah. and like Diana Vreeland was buying quilts from G's Ben. Yes. So it's like, I mean, Jonathan Holstein, like, I love him. and But it's like, you know, the narrative that we get is that the the Whitney yes. show broke open the quilt in this revival, but it's just, it's not true. It was a huge, yeah. huge deal. But it wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't the, it wasn't as, well, like, yeah. I love what you're doing because you're putting that in perspective. And, that, yeah. and, and, and in this day and age, no matter what you're talking, quilts or 
politics or whatever it is, we need perspective. Yeah. <laughs> and I really admire what you're doing with perspective. And, you know, Thanks, like Mom. it's not just one thing. It's not just one thing. It's never one thing. Uh, what's Therese's May, Therese May's quote called? It's cat. Cat face. Cat face. Let's cat see. Face. Cat. 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 Yes. Cat. Like a cat. Meow. Mom, cat look at face. and what the quilt I started with is a cat mural. It's so unusual that you're talking about a cat, a cat thing because that's this is what I'm. Oh yeah. I always start with a picture on my screen, you know. Um, so let's see. I don't know. I'm not seeing it yet. I mean, that's I mean, kind of obscure. If you go to the Iowa, let me let me send, see if I can send you a link, okay? Okay, and while you're doing that, yeah. I'm going to pull yeah, up some. Fun. <laughs> so here's here's a Therese May. Yeah, she's great. Hang on. Um, <laughs> and mom, we're, we're going to go see the uh, exhibit together, the Fabric of a Nation. Yeah. And you know yeah, what? So I think excited. some people are going to be able to join us, too. I was just telling Hannah about it on the phone the other day saying, uh, we get stuck <laughs> if we may be, be coming to New York if the weather turns bad. I know. Here's a Therese May quilt. Um, I, I know her stuff. Her stuff reminds me of, um, I don't know, there's kind of a, um, there's kind of a style that, where there's a lot of beading, uh, uh, a lot of embroidery. Is that true of like all of her work? Because here's... I've got her. You no, know, are you thinking? You're thinking are you thinking of Jane Burke Ch Cochran? Yes, yes. That's different. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me just see if I can get you know. We can go on, but and come back mm -hmm. later. But I can see if um, if Carissa Heckerthorn, our new director, could shoot me a picture of that quilt. Yeah, I, I. But I do think there was there was so much of this embellishment though with a group of people. I mean, it was Jane Birch Cochran, but I mean, this is embellished, and this is Therese May, and and yeah. Terry Mangett was doing a bunch of embroidery, heavy embroidery and and decoration, yeah. right? Oh yeah, they that that's one of the big things that they did was um, embellished. Yeah. You know, also. Um, Dashboard Saints by uh, Terry Manga. Mm -hmm. You know that was very much you know had had actual charms hanging on it. What was the deal with the kimonos? Everybody was doing kimonos. Why Yvonne Porcella? That's Look, this is Therese May, another kimono. What's up with that? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, Yvonne started. I mean, she made Ginza. She made these giant quilts that were kimono shapes, and I think she spent time in Japan. I think Yvonne did. Uh, another person whose name I can't think of did. Uh, kimono shapes actually you know with haiku uh cranes and things on it but yeah it was a, it was just a i think a fascinating image i mean it's shaped like a t-shirt if you look at that too yeah that's so. true that's true interesting yeah. um hang on there's a therese may I, I, here's what i'm gonna do though <laughs> Two Fonz women at their computer Googling. It's fascinating. Um, Jane Birch Cochran is, is, and I got to meet her for Quilt Folk and she's she's really amazing. Um, hang on, let's see. But she has, you, you'll see the similarities, you, you all, you, you'll see, and I should not be ignoring the chat, but I'm so worried about technically making this <laughs> worth your time, your time, mom, and everybody's time. Oh, um, I'm having a great time. Okay. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Good. Good. Okay, here's a Jane Birch Cochran, and I think people will kind of see what I'm talking about. It'd be interesting to pull up. See, this is a different, this is Jane, and I'm not saying they're like derivative or whatever, I'm not saying that, but there was, there's a vibe. There was a vibe in the air, and it was like, you know, yeah, heavy embellishment, beads, buttons. Now I'm going to grab. Yes, okay, so Mary, go to, let me give you a website, and yeah. you'll see these, you'll find that. Okay, so it's theresemay.com quilts, T H E. R E S E M A Y dot quilt dot quilt dot com dot com okay. slash quilt dot com slash quilts. Okay, great. Yeah. And you'll see, and then Don't you'll read ahead. Quilts. That's what I tell everybody. Don't read ahead. Because scroll, scroll down and oh, this is great. Quilt. This is great. Yeah, there's a whole gallery. Hold on, hold on. Nobody read ahead. I always tell that to Eric. I say <laughs> don't read ahead because he'll whatever we're doing, he'll try to read ahead, but I don't like it. Okay, here, you guys are gonna be glad you didn't read ahead. Check this out. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So view, full screen. So this is Therese May. Oh, I gotta move you. Her quilts run about four grand. Okay. Interesting. Others. I don't see cat face, but oh, cat size. You, you, you scroll down, there's lots of cats. I gotta move you down, Mom. You're in the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm in the way. Okay, so are, are these mini, mini quilts? 
They seem small. Um, well, I think if you click on one, twelve by oh, twelve. These are two hundred dollars. Yeah. She says this small and, art quilt is part of a series of faces that show a variety of characteristics possessed by humanity, both in children and adults. We all have a mixture of feelings and physical characteristics contributing to our humanity and connecting us with each other. Add to cart. Cool. Yeah, I, I thought that's amazing that now we live in a time when I think starting out quilting in 1977, and now <laughs> add to cart. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you scroll down, there's $5,000 quilts. Of must oh, wow. Them. Wow. I like these little faces. These are cool. Yeah, I'm into it. I mean, she's Charm just... Pack cat. She's such a, uh, oh, is that cat face? Oh no, charm pack cat. Okay. No, I don't see cute. cat face. Um, this is, this is cute. I mean, look, if, if you're a quilt lover who likes equality, you know, who has like cat, like, I'm, you know, of course you like equality, but I'm saying, you know, this is like, could be perfect for Christmas for someone in your life. $5,000. Yeah. <laughs> um, support an artist. Support an artist. This is interesting. I mean, it's really, it really looks uh, woven or something up here. These are great. Very I can see cool. why people love this program, Mary, because you just, you just go down a rabbit hole. That's right. Why not? You Mom, know, that's May, what... you know what, what, what made me think we started talking about the early years yep. and these early artists that were there. And then I'm like, oh yeah. And Therese May, you know, when I saw the quilts that we have uh, in the show, I mean, it's in fact, I think you know, there's there's a recorded, Megan's going to record a gallery walk of the, the show, Here Comes the Sun, and you might want to put it on sometime. Well, I mean, or send a, people to a, a thousand percent. I mean, there's, it's, I say to people, this show will go beyond forever because there's so much to look at and so much to explore. Scrabble. Oh, I want Scrabble to stay, but she doesn't want to stay. Oh, stay? wait, I have to, I have to, I want, no, okay. Scrabble ran away, y'all. I have to. Well, she got squirmy. She got squirmy. Okay. Um, here's the thing is I really want you up on the screen. So I'm going to have to do something. I got to, I'm just going to have to, just going to have to make a little adjustment. This audience is very used to making adjustments. <laughs> I'll, go get, I'll go get Scrabble a cookie while you do that. Oh. Because she was good. Okay. Well, we fixed it, but that's fine. Um, okay. So what is this? Hearts and hats. It's all, it's, I like it. I like this stuff. I mean, Look, I'll be perfectly honest, you all. There was a time in my life where, like, this kind of heavy embellishment, this stuff, it was in the 80s. I'm not, you know, this is a newer work. This is 2003, it seems. But, like, you know, when I was growing up, when I was growing up, you know, it was not cool to, like, you know, I don't know, quilts. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And, um, and now, you know, now I see the value in these different, in these different quilts. I mean, the Jane Birch Cochran stuff, I'm a huge fan of hers. We're, we're, we gotta look at Jane Birch Cochran. Yeah, I, we gotta do her soon, because I just she's love her. Her um, town, she's from Rabbit Hatch. Rabbit Hatch, Kentucky. I was at her house. I was at her house for Cool Folk, and they, there's a there's a dog that's a, may, a mayor of Rabbit Hatch. They elect a dog for a mayor every year. Okay, so you're you're gonna be over here. Oh, that's great. This is pretty. This is very nice. So this is all Therese May. 5,000. Sister Gertrude Morgan was a very prolific painter and a very free brush stroker who had complete confidence in her every movement of the paintbrush. Her angel paintings have an immediate effect as soon as the brush hit the canvas or paper, as if her spirit was more in charge than her brain. I believe that I had the same kind of energy as I painted this Gertrude-inspired angel on this quilt. Okay. In fact, I gave up on the brushes and painted the finishing touches onto the surface with my bare hands. It felt just great. I felt just great with the results. Okay, so she was channeling Sister Gertrude Morgan. Morgan. Interesting. What's so neat is the fact that um, she's so prolific and she's been working since, you know, mm -hmm. obviously the mids or whatever, the 70s. I mean, I guess I first went to Quilt Market maybe in 1981 or 1980. Um, and so it's wonderful that these artists are, you know, are producing work and then, you know, I mean, I like to think she's making a living selling her work and teaching. Mm -hmm. So. Pretty by me. Um, Faith said, uh, maybe Scrabble was barking at the cats in the quilt. I thought that was pretty <laughs> clever. That was pretty clever. Oh, this is very, very abstract. She's Lots a C cats. student. Yeah, everybody. She's a C student. <laughs> you can't say that about <laughs> Scrabble. She's a C student. <laughs> Jeez, I think it's cute. You're like she's a. You know, when, 
yeah. we got back from the from Budapest and she'd been boarded here for you know almost two and a half weeks and on the way to pick her up we called ahead that we're coming and their phones were out and so when we got up there they had no notion we were coming they had her up front you know at the checkout counter you know just hanging out with them but she loves going there right she loves the, the being boarded yeah. yeah she didn't miss us at all <laughs> i like this one i like this one so so have you met therese may what's what's the scoop is have you... no i i haven't met therese may but you know i'm thinking back when i was at QuiltCon, you know back when we could roam freely in Austin, mm -hmm. I was at, I bought fabric at a booth and there was someone, I think it was Therese May. Really? At QuiltCon? Yes. Yeah, I, if I were, if I had my business cards here, I'd look up hers because I think she, we exchanged business cards. I think it was Therese May. We were buying stuff. I was like, oh my God, you're Therese May. Well, I didn't, I didn't know she, it. I didn't know she was at QuiltCon. I somebody, wish. Well, somebody of that ilk was. Okay. But I can't remember if it was Therese May. It was somebody big like that. You know, some of those early... Well, this is all yeah. very interesting. Did you know that? Did you hear the news that uh, Joanna Rose passed away? Oh no, she, really? She was, yeah. Well, she was ninety something, I think. But you know, she, she that whole collection of quilts that was at the Armory. Oh yeah, I'm is, gonna pull up the picture right now. International, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, see, that's the other great thing about this show. So podcasts are fine, you know. But the thing is, is that we are visual people. We quilt people. And when you talk about like, oh yes, Joanna S. Rose, the owner of all those quilts at the Infinite Variety exhibit, uh, you know, uh, she passed away. And on this show, we can go look at the pictures, right, of the show. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because this is uh, this is so unscripted. Oh, it's very, it's all yes, it is extremely it's the opposite unscripted. Of scripted. Yeah. So here, I'm just going to grab a couple. So you talk to to the people about the show while I grab some really good pictures, okay? Well, it's, you know, I'm so lucky that my oldest, Hannah, lives in New York. And so I, I when I heard about this show, I went to New York specifically because it was only up for a few days, wasn't mm -hmm, it? It was a mm -hmm. week. And uh, we went, and then I went back a second time. But it, I'm just so glad. And, you know, that at that show was the last time I saw... Um, uh, artist James alive because oh, Robert wow. and James, I saw them across. She was in a wheelchair. Now you have to tell people who you're talking about. Well, Robert and artist James were these amazing quilt cool collectors that, that really, they gave their collection to the um, University of Nebraska and really, you know, was the start of the, I mean, I don't think it was the start of the collection of the International Quilt Museum, but it was a major, 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 and they've been major, major donors. And, you know, the the university raised all the money to build the original building. It was a match, I believe, that mm -hmm. matched the, the James Foundation's gift. And then when it came time to add on to the International in Lincoln, you know, artist was gone, and I believe in Robert um was like i don't have that i'm you know i'm 90 years old here's the money mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and so and of course you're on that board or have been on that board i've been on that board but um i mean it's the largest repository of quilts in the world uh, right here in the midwest which i'm very proud of the fact because mm -hmm. i can drive over and back in one day mm -hmm. i've got the most amazing pictures of this exhibit so you got on talking about the quilt yeah. museum but we need to talk about this quilt show the infinite variety. Yeah. So now I'm going to pull up the pictures that I've gotten. I'm really fast, y'all. I'm really fast. I think I got really good pictures. We will find out momentarily. Okay, here we go. It was a birthday gift. The show was a birthday gift for her. I think for her, 80, I can't remember, or 90th birthday, 80th birthday. Uh, and she, you know, she wanted something she'd never seen before. And so they, I can't imagine what was spent to rent the armory and the, the, the designers of this exhibit. The lighting would come on and off and they hung them in these spirals. And they hung them back to back because there were, I don't know, you know, I get mixed up on numbers. There were like 600 quilts, 350 quilts, 400 quilts, something like that, a large number of quilts. And they hung them back to back. They stacked them. And I know Carolyn Ducey said when they mount this exhibit over in Lincoln, they're going to, you know, probably display more quilts than they ever have before in one gallery. And they're going to try to recreate the look of that exhibit, although in a totally different space there it is yeah, these they were like women sitting around a circle together yeah i didn't i this one is first we'll come back to this one but this is the show and now some of you may have yeah. seen this some of did, did any of you in the chat see this show in new york um yeah exactly joanne s rose's husband gave her the show it's just crazy how many quilts were that were there 350 wow 
I, I mean, don't quote me. I have to look things up that are numbers, but um, it's just yeah. so incredible. And Martha Stewart wrote the introduction to the to the book. There's like a big coffee you, table book. You gave me the book. That's right. I did. Now, wasn't I sick? I was really sick. I think that's why I didn't go. Isn't it? Is that true? No, uh, no, that wasn't that wasn't that time. I'm making you small so people can you, see. You it. may not have been as into quilting at that time. I don't time. think I what was. Year was it? What year was I it? I think it was 2013. No, it wasn't 2013. Anyway, we'll figure mm -hmm. it out. Got a few more pictures here. Um, this So, Mom, when will the show be in Lincoln? When is it going to come to the quilt museum? I don't know. We don't know. Okay, we don't know, but they're, you'll they're, hear it here first. Yes, Word and Bird Nerd, they are all red and white quilts. All of them, yeah. 300, I think it was. 2011 was two, when the show was. Yeah, I was like working with you, but I wasn't ready to like start running around seeing quilts because yeah. I was into making yeah. them. I didn't need to see them. That was, yes. I just talked about this yeah. at the top of the show. So so this was a yeah. little bit different for me in 2011. Look at those, my God, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Wow. It's just crazy. Mm. Thousands of people went, thousands and thousands of people went. The book, free. the book is really, really good. Look at this one. I mean, this one is just sort of like, you know, it's getting top billing. If you could even say that any of the quilts were hung more prominently than the others, it's hard to say that. But I mean, this this quilt was really a showstopper, right? Right. And the and the international does a quilt of the month, uh, mm -hmm. and that that was their quilt of the month, uh, that particular one. But you know, Carolyn told me I don't think it's any secret. You know. She just collected any every red and white quilt. I think any dealer that had a red and white yeah. quilt knew that he had a mm -hmm. fire for it. And so some of them are, you know, they're not all showstoppers, you know. Right. They're not all right. great, but they had to take them all. This oh, really? The, the deal. Wow. So you can see why some, they're going to stack some and and they're going to do, I hope I'm just wetting people to have <laughs> Yeah. You know, spoiling things because they're, they're going to, they're, they do a wonderful job now in these events there. And Fonz and Porter is on exhibit there right now. That's right. At the Quilt Museum, there's a Fonz and Porter mm -hmm. retrospective right now. So, yeah, this was at the center of the show, these draped chairs. Pretty, pretty gorgeous. Pretty gorgeous. Okay. So that was, yeah, Houston did. PJ Meeb, Houston did recreate it one yes. year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. The airplane quilt. I know. I love it. Okay. So now so that was a, that was a, a digression, mom. You, you, you called it. I mean, this is, it's all a digression because I didn't plan that we would talk about infinite variety. We may talk more about Joanna S. Rose at some point and her quilt collection because she collected other things as well, but not tonight because I want to do a couple other things with you, mom. I want to show you a couple other really two, two pictures. Mm -hmm. I want to show you two pictures okay. that I planned and then I'll let you go and I'll let me go. Cause that wasn't even supposed to stream tonight. Okay. Here's something I gotta, I gotta show you. I'm going to do this. Oh, I've got three pictures actually. Have you ever seen this colonial Barbie? Have you ever seen this? I mean, it's real. It's a real thing. And it's so, I mean, like I, the word problematic gets used a lot and sometimes too much because then things that are really, really problematic are like, you know, they don't get as much attention as they should because, but this is like, this is like deeply, this is wrong. It's wrong in so many ways. Like, like colonial Barbie, first of all, the reason I have this mom is because look back here. Look, you see this? The messenger quilt. The messenger quilt. So this, what they're doing is like using, they're using like the Underground Railroad like quilt code oh, no. thing. But oh, it's, no. but they didn't do that. The, the colonists, you're talking about 1600. And the Underground Railroad was in the 18, I mean like 1860. And, and so, they didn't use quilts. Well, we're not going to go there. I, I mean, yeah. we're not going to go there. I do a whole a whole lecture on that. It's very complicated, but correct. I mean, yeah. So, but it's just totally weird. And it's Barbie and she's like dressed like Betsy Ross, which is the 1776. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, with the makeup, with her makeup, she would have been, you know, uh, considered a strumpet if she <laughs> had a paint on her face. A strumpet. She would have been a strumpet. She's Mall Flanders. She's really kind of a Mall Flanders. She is a Mall Flanders. She was a strumpet and a seamstress, by the way. But, it, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. It's really a lot. The messenger quilt. Good God. Okay. Anyway, so that's a lot. But then here's this other thing. 
that I think you will really be interested in. It's so cool. Oh, oh, well. Maybe, maybe the messenger quilt is like she was helping Paul Revere because he was, you know, if, if we could see that booklet, let's hope that it was actually I in hope so. colonial I, times. I actually don't. Yeah, it's true. She may have, it may be something else, but I'd like to think that it's just stupid. Okay, here, <laughs> here is... Um, this one, so Eric found something, but I, I forgot I had this one too. I'm, I'm doing all this work, mom, on quilts as clothes. Can you believe, what is this? Look at this pa fashion picture, everybody. Look what I go through to, to bring you content. I mean, are you kidding me? What is it? Oh, it's it's advertising. I think it's advertising. Yeah, the the underwear or the leotard or whatever. Okay, but it's it's in this line of clothing by this designer on whatever online marketplace who's cutting up quilts right for clothes, which we can't talk about because I talk about it every single show. We gotta talk about it later. But this one is inscrutable to me. She's just looking at an antique quilt with her underpants. I mean, it's just so stupid. It's gone. Well, the world has gone quilt clothes crazy. I'm telling you. She's got her legs spread out. I like know. That. And, and you know, you said that Barbie was stupid. You know, Jack and Rebecca <laughs> laugh, but because a lot of times I say, well, that's just dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it there is. was a building. There was a building in Prague that was supposedly. It was designed by Gary, I think. It was supposed to represent Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers because one was kind of curved. And I said, well, that's just dumb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just dumb. Well, that's just dumb. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so then the last thing, oh. I think you'll like this. It's just stupid. It's just it's just dumb. It's just dumb. Okay. So then the last thing tonight, and, and you all are just great. And mom, I just can't thank you enough for coming on. It's so <laughs> much fun. I love your, your people. If these, as Wardenburg, if these, those are made by Depends, I'm getting <laughs> I know, Mom. The chat is what makes this show really fun. I mean, that it's it, this oh show is God. fun because of the people in the chat. You just got to come to the show all the time, Mom. Um, I, I do. Now that I found it there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! And Holmes. Okay, Holmes Maker is extremely funny. Everybody's funny, but Holmes Holmes is funny because she just brought up. Oh no! Oh no! Mom, Mom's. I gotta call her back. I gotta call her back. There. She's the only person I call on FaceTime other than Eric. Okay. Anyway, um, Holmes has said, everybody, in case you didn't see, that uh, <laughs> that we have to drink, right? They're not your grandma's underpants. And every time, if you missed it, every time somebody reads or says, these aren't your grandma's quilts, that hackneyed phrase, wherever you are, you take a shot. You take a shot of your of your preferred spirit okay she'll she'll be back oh, I she'll... Call just now. oh yeah okay Where's your iPad? my ipad is in the other room no it can't be on my ipad okay well i'm gonna show okay i'm gonna end that call just oh yeah turn off my ipad that's probably a good just idea call her back on FaceTime. well i just did <laughs> okay here's here's the last picture and if mom can come on that's great but you all are gonna love this what's that probably okay you all look at this thing this is amazing i'm gonna keep i'll try mom again here so eric found this it was a tweet it was a tweet and of course he sent it along you know and i don't know if he knew it would be on the show but of course it would be on the show does anybody recognize what's going on here because here's what the person said uh with the, this was the picture that they tweeted and they said, hang on. Great, now I came in. She said that this was how her grandmother taught her to stitch a straight line. Do you, have you, do you recognize this? Is this something that you, I think it's brilliant. I've never seen this before. I've never heard this before, you know? I can search Angus Anderson, yeah. So, I mean, hold on, let me see if I can find this thing and then I'll see what you have to say. Yeah, here we go. Here we go, here we go. The tweet reads, this was how grandma showed me how to sew in a straight line. 218,000 likes. I think that is pretty cool. I mean, you have seen it done. Who, who's, who said that you've seen it done? So demented, you've seen it. Yep, yep. I 
hear my mother. I hear my mother calling back. I hope we can get her back uh, for the end of the show. But yeah, I just think I just think that's great. You've seen it. Have you used it? Have you done it? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, good. Amy found that thing. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. I'm going to um, give mom a call too. Let's see. Wait, hold on. What are you saying about the, you've not seen it before. You've seen the marks on the thumb for even stitch spacing. Interesting. A tattoo. Yes, Myra, a tattoo would work. You know? Yeah, it actually, <laughs> it actually would. It's a great idea. I mean, you just, you just never know, right? <laughs> Hell no. Um, <laughs> Myra. Anyway. Okay. Let me see if I can call mom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, can you hear her? I hear her. Okay. Sorry. We're doing it one more time. All right. Now I'm going to click on this thing from you're getting called. I'm getting, I'm calling. Oh, oh, oh hi. It, it, oh, my phone died. I wasn't watching the oh. battery. Just like blank, so. Wow. It was that kind of tech trouble. Well, I'm really glad yes. you're back because we're kind of coming into the last, the last bit of the show. But yeah. hey, but you got to see this. Look at this thing. Eric found it. It was a tweet. This girl said, um, this was how grandma showed me how to sew in a straight line. I know you have been making quilts since 1975 and you've never seen that. I haven't seen no. it. I know it's amazing. So cool. That's amazing. You know, when we used to do the tip table, Mary, we'd get people would send in tips that a, a lot of times I was just like, wow, I never thought of that. I mean, they just, you know, I know it's great. Okay. Here's the last You're thing. Gone. I know. Like I know. I've got to go. We got to go. But here's the thing. So Amy just put this in the chat. This is, Oh. Oh. Hang on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to turn it up. Uh, this is something Amy found, and it's. No, I don't want alerts from your CBS. Can you, can you believe that? Does anybody say, yeah, I want alerts from this? Like, well, maybe if you're local. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, now I need to. I want to turn it up. That was pretty low sound wise. Hmm. Well, I can turn, okay, let me see what I can do. So he just said, oh, oh mom, if they, if he says these aren't your, we have to take a shot. We do a shot every time somebody says these aren't your grandmother's quilts, that tired hackneyed phrase. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, let's see what, he, let's see what they have to say. This is, this will be the best I can do on sound probably. Okay. For creations that are made with love and stitched by hand. On a swing through Mississippi, Jan Crawford visited a group of quilters who are worried their future is at risk because of the slow pace of their art. Hmm. You know what? You know what I'm gonna do? It's really, really low. And I think if I play this, I get copyright. They don't, when I played that thing about Rihanna and ASAP Rocky, it was like, they didn't like it. I don't even think I put it on YouTube. I had to, I don't know. I think I better not play this, but Amy, Amy, thank you for sending it. And I will watch it and we should all watch it and send them angry, energy. No, I'm kidding. Don't ever do that. No, no. I'm just saying not them. I'm just saying that anybody who would put this story on the news, it's ridiculous. Quilting fading away. Look at us. We're here. <laughs> My mom's here. Anyway. Hi mom. Okay. Thank you for coming to this show and being on this show. Who me? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's great. I love it. It is fun. It is great. And we really made it happen with the tech. I mean, that was like totally, that was barely, that was barely going to happen, I, I was afraid. I had to run and get the uh, thing that allows me to charge my phone on my computer. Oh, okay. That's good. Well, I feel like we <laughs> could hang out a long time. But next time, next time what we should do, next time, let's plan when you're going to be on the show again. And then we can discuss the materials a little bit. And you could bring something to totally surprise me and us. And that would be really fun. I, I already know what I would bring. Well, I want to know what it is. It's but gonna you... be a surprise. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you all for coming this for this crazy Monday show. You're amazing, Mom. I love you so much. And uh just everybody, just thank you so much. Thank you. It's yeah.
yeah, it's and good times. It's just fun. Part of it, I just it's so much fun just to hang out with you and your friends, and it's just great. It is great. Okay, I'll wave to you. Let me see. I'll wave to you like I can see you. Bye. Bye, mom. Now you, now you, wait, you turn, 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 I I was trying, wait, wait, turn to the, wait, turn to the right, to your right. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, yeah, no, do the other way. Turn the other way. Okay. Look that way. And I'm going to look this way and it'll be like, we're waving goodbye to each other. Like we're on the screen. No, turn. (laughs) (laughs) You see what I'm trying to do? Okay. 